Welcome back to Step or Whatever Podcast. B. Kwan Chi or Brian here. And before we get into it, I always like to remind and say that, you know, the best way to support me, the channel, and all that is to like, follow, and subscribe. We're this here on YouTube. You can follow on Twitter for fun tweets and updates, as well as I stream uh, gaming on Twitch. So you can also follow there to catch me live. And the streams do get uploaded in a timely manner on the YouTube channel. So if you're new or just checking things out, you know, you can uh, check about me. I, I try to organize stuff a little bit. It's been more of a fun hobby than anything else, but I try to organize things. So you can see like certain playlists of like stream VODs and other gaming related stuff, mostly gaming stuff. But I'd like to just blabber on like some nobody in his mid thirties talking in a microphone, but who knows? It may become something someday, maybe not, but hey, at least uh, cause it's almost the end of the year. I might do a few more podcasts. I am planning on taking a break in January because I visit family after the holidays. So looking forward to that. And there might be some light streaming as well um, uh, this month and next month. But then the breaks. But it's like one of those things like it doesn't feel like a huge like commitment or stress since this isn't like the main thing I do in my life. It's not like I have to uh, worry about like if things aren't uh, trending or getting views or getting demonetized and stuff like that. And with my content too, I, I don't think I really got anything demonetized. Um, I think a funny, um, stream VOD when I tried to upload it, it's just a few seconds. Cause I was, um, checking out some game on stream and somebody recommended like the run and gun or golden guns. I, I forget it. I, I'm probably going to play on stream eventually, but the trailer had some music and it was just a few seconds. And then because of the little review from uh, YouTube, it got like demonetized, like from like, uh, not as a YouTube because a content ID or whatever. And they demonetized. And sometimes I have like content that's like it's shared or the content creator gets the revenue or whatever. I'm not sure exactly how that works. So only instances I have that with that personally is when I uploaded, um, it's probably going to be taken down. I'll get into other updates on the channel too. But when I was playing Final Fantasy IV, the prelude part of the game, or like when you're leaving, um, that got uh, copyrighted, but it didn't like block it or stuff. So, but I, I'm not sure what that really means either. Um, and like even example I did uh, in some of the gaming videos, um, I played Geometry Dash and I, the music got copyright claimed or whatever. It's just like, like, Hey, you can't monetize this video. It's like, Oh, okay. Because I'm, I'm not sure if we're going to play more of that for the channel. I'm mostly going to do it on stream with no music, just so I don't have to worry about music and stuff like that. But I, I rather than that, um, when it's like a majority, but it, it was funny with the one, it was the first Raptor stream like just because a few seconds of music they like claim copyright but at least youtube had this little way that you can like cut the part of the video or uh mute it or something like that so i think they have at least surprisingly some decent tools to deal with it but not like um probably more people know about this versus me talking about it but let me look that up i'm i'm uh want to quote the name right Okay, that was, I was gonna mess it up a little bit, but that YouTube channel, uh, YouTuber, the Totally Not Mark, got like 150 videos like actually taken down for copyright strikes from Toy Animation because it was a lot of, like a lot of anime stuff like that. And from what I've seen the updates, I, I think it's getting um, a little better. Like some videos got back, but I'm not sure exactly how that works. I never really heard of a video being taken down. Um, so not sure what that meant exactly. Cause only my personal experience is either like, Hey, you can't monetize on this or Hey, it's going to be shared or Hey, it's going to go to the content. Whoever's claiming content thing. Even here, like sometimes you can just like, uh, uh dispute it and it, it may go in your favor, but I guess the scary part is like actually worry about getting an actual strike on the channel which I think if you fight it, but then it's lost in your favor or something. But I know like other people talked about it probably even better than what I did. Uh, like Philip DeFranco is when I heard about it at a PewDiePie kind of weighed in on it, but it just sounded crazy. I even watched a little bit of the video too. So that's really sucks. So I think that's 
one thing I'm a little thankful for is that this isn't my bread and butter. And if it is, it's probably not going to be too much in terms of, you know, relying on, oh, I don't want to say relying because I do play games and games are going to be good. Uh, kind of, but I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like a lot of this stuff isn't like, you even made a point that some channels, I'm not sure if they're monetized or not. I'm not sure if that's the big difference. But some channels literally had like anime episodes and even movies from Toei Animation, like Dragon Ball, I believe. Um, I'm not sure if it's a YouTube thing, if if videos are uploaded that aren't monetized, like by people who are users who are not in the partner program, like if that monetized, like it doesn't care. And if it is, it always does that, like review and upload it. So I, I have no experience in that. I don't really upload I, I I used to uh, upload on a second channel before, and that and I can segue into my update as well because I, I try to do like a gaming channel, like a, more of a let's play style. I guess it's coming back with me doing streams as well, but I, I don't remember because when you start a new channel, you can't monet. I don't think I did. I forget how easy it was to become a YouTube partner before, because a, a little history lesson is that before, I felt it was a little bit easier. But then YouTube, um, they put the requirements like you have to have at least a minimum of a thousand subscribers and at least, um, I think it's 4,000 hours of watch content per 12 months. And I remember, because I was almost thinking of YouTube, um, the gaming one might be like a fun, like second project get bigger than it. I don't know. I kind of I like the idea of like separating things out in terms of content. I almost thought about doing that with this channel, but it does make sense at this moment, unless like a second channel can really get all the subscribers like right away, like migrate from channel. Oh, I might migrate or shared or something like that. Cause starting a new channel is a lot harder when in terms of looking, if your goal is like monetizing or earning a living, maybe that my mother say like earning a living and stuff like that too. So if anyone who ever wants to get into YouTube and stuff like that, Start it with a hobby. Like, don't rely on it. It could honestly take a long time unless you're really lucky and all that. But like I was saying, I did um, kind of like a Let's Play um, format. And I decided to re-upload the videos. I kind of like, instead of doing like smaller episodes, I just chunked them into big uploads. But I'm probably, I'd say probably, but I probably am, but I am definitely am going to be taking them down at the end of the year just because, I know. It's, it's like over four years old. It's a little cringy. And a lot of the games I'm like replaying on stream as well. So I just feel like um, quality wise, it's something that is probably just won't hang on to the channel and stuff like that. And I don't know, I guess it kind of getting rid of the old stuff so I can come to focus on, on ever since I got my partnership back because of actually meeting the requirements again. Seeing like if the new stuff works. This is a lot of old videos I'm going to. Uh, take down as well just because like it's, it's like one of those things like it, if it doesn't really fit anymore I did actually take down a lot of them uh, before even starting this podcast um, earlier this year I did, used to do like Loot Crate unboxings have you heard of that and I did one with that uh, shit I can't remember it's nature nature box yeah I did like a little like because I had a stupid idea, like being like a vlogger and talking about this and that and having opinions and all that. And that's kind of a stupid idea. But besides that, you know, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel and podcast where I share my ideas and talk like an idiot. But yeah, that's kind of like a little blurb that um, because I have a few podcasts I plan on recording, probably two more. I might be able to fit them in either with the holidays and stuff like that. Just having a good time to actually sit down and re uh, record. And all that, and maybe a little light on streaming for the next couple of weeks. But that's another thing I wanted to also talk about is that when it comes to streaming, I've kind of been inspired like with other games and finding them and all that, and being able to play them on on stream. It's kind of like find games from my childhood that maybe little or no one has really heard of, and all that. Because I don't know, I probably would talk about this maybe later. Um, I'm thinking about like when the new year comes around, like talking a little bit more about my goals with the channel, but. Kind of like point out, like, hey, this thing exists, or like, hey, remember this, or bet you never heard of that kind of thing. So, kind of reliving stuff and kind of like 
experience it again through an older mind versus being a kid because especially with gaming and stuff like that too like as a kid you play a bunch of like stupid games that are probably really difficult and stuff like that and you just kind of bear with it because your kid playing games versus maybe being more critical or just being more i don't know thinking that your time is a little bit more valued as you get older it depends what you do either way but yeah, just a little blurb about the channel and talk, stuff like that. But I did want to talk a little bit about the holidays, this podcast. Um, I'm trying to think what I talked about last week. Oh, one thing I, I remember talking about last week is with YouTube ads. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this because I, I mentioned like how going back from YouTube premium to just regular free YouTube. My God, it's like so many different, uh, so many repeated ads as well, but there's so many ads and videos and I even up. I think I mentioned another update. So I'm going to squeeze in a little bit more ad time, as well, because just a little behind the scenes. If those are curious, who don't know, is that when you like upload and you have the partnership, you can kind of put ads wherever you want. I believe the video has to be at least eight minutes, um, eight or ten. I forget. Do you have ads in the middle that run in the middle? Because I think every video can have. Uh, ads running in the beginning, uh, at the end, or even a little banner thing versus an actual like skippable ad. But I think with the main, like in, in the middle of the video, the skippable ads, it has to be a certain length. And I believe it's eight minutes. When you edited that, um, can add, it is a neat little timeline as well. So you can actually like click where you want it. Um, and you can kind of see like they have like a little sound wave thing, but it's not as useful as it could be but you can even literally uh put in timestamps of when you want an ad to play and i just feel like it's been getting excessive as well like like, like when i uh, like today i was watching on my youtube uh youtube on my smart tv and i had to pause to take dogs out and when i got back in and using the video it went straight to an ad so i think like if you like refresh or uh pause for a bit and all that it just gets crazy especially like since you had to like skip the ad and all that but one last thing i uh didn't mention is that youtube kind of has this neat thing where you can have it set ads for you and from what i read online like it's useful for finding more natural breaks uh when a good spot to squeeze an ad versus like cutting things off but i feel like when i uh i do watch one of my favorites like only place and stuff like that i watch a lot of the compilations like the best of or a complete series i feel like people just may just shove ads w I'm not sure if it's based on frequency. So I kind of use the autofill as a base and then kind of tweak it from there. Cause in funny, like some of my uploads, it would just give them so many ads slots and then some like barely any. So I'm not sure how well that system works. So, um, I mean, a lot of times if the like excessive amounts, I can like remove some. So they're kind of spaced out, but I don't know if I should just like, part of me just wants to like, leave so many ads like how youtube recommends it but i don't want to put off people and stuff like that so i don't know i, I mentioned in the last uh podcast as well but i always pre appreciate feedback and i'll probably say it again like if in terms of people who watch free youtube and have to deal with ads like how much is too excessive or do it doesn't even matter and i even heard of ad blocker i'm not sure how that works when it comes to mid-roll ads but Trying to maybe have a system to like skip videos like that, but still. And moving on to the next subject of the podcast, uh, talking a little bit about video games. Uh, not to have too much to add commentary wise, but last week was the video game awards, or just the game awards, and I don't know. I just don't really care about it that much. Uh, the only thing I I don't even remember seeing much headlines in, on Twitter and stuff like that besides. Uh, the new trailer for the Sonic movie, the Sonic 2. And I think it was just announced. I'm, I think they put the trailer for the Sonic new Sonic game, Sonic Frontiers. But I was here like there's no Nintendo because I think at least the prior last year's Game Awards, the only cool thing I remember was they that's when they dropped uh, the Sephiroth DLC character for Smash. Besides that, I don't know. I just don't care. And... I think other people kind of had the same opinion is that it's kind of just like big triple a companies is kind of jerking each other off. And sometimes it's kind of neat to see games when that kind of deserve it. Um, 
I haven't played it. I don't think I plan to, but the, it looks good. It looks like a cool story that it takes to, I believe, got game of the year. I think even best family game was a surprise because it was a lot of Nintendo titles and usually they take the uh, family game. But then again, all Nintendo games were pretty much like remakes or rehashes like uh, the Mario 3D World and the Mario Party Superstars. I think maybe WarioWare that knew it was only like new, new Nintendo game. But I think when it just comes to like video games, like I always going to play video games. I'm always a big uh, video gamer. But I think just what came out this year, and I'm sure other stories came out and other controversy and stuff like that, but I think the big, big one was like the Blizzard activation and how they treat employees and all that. I'm sure other people covered it a lot more. My little summary of it is just that companies can be really crappy, uh, very toxic. I guess that one was more, um, maybe even demeaning to women. Like it was like uh, having like more like frat place, uh, fraternity kind of environment and all that and yeah probably have to look into it, it just pretty much doing these companies uh treat employees like crap and i'm not sure if that's like everyone but when you see stuff to i don't know if it's how the employees are, are treated but like the and i talked about it even for before the grant the grand theft auto gta the definitive remake is just really awful I first came out, I think they're patching that out, so maybe it's a little bit better. But yeah, it just seems like. And also, last year, I haven't played it, but I heard about it the Cyberpunk 2077 that had kind of a disaster as well. And even, even going back in the day, I don't think it's that, that old, but EA did the Star Wars game that was like, had so many issues with like in-game purchases and stuff like that and yeah and then I, I kind of feel a little bit leaning towards uh indie titles and indie games really smaller companies and smaller games like i can't remember the last time i've really been uh excited for a triple a title or from a big company maybe maybe just nintendo and stuff like that with i think maybe animal crossing new horizons is probably the big like big game that i got excited about yeah, kind of like smaller games. And what I've been in the habit, because um, I mentioned Oni Plays as well, one of my favorite, I want to say like, because I know he's not like a YouTuber, how you want to call like a Let's Player person. He doesn't know it too much. He did uh, record a lot of them uh, earlier this year. But Ding Dong, because I really like him, his vibe. Um, I kind of feel like uh, similar minds in a sense, but... I feel like he has a lot of insight because he's actually a game developer for Wan Wan Games, if you never heard of that. Um, check that out. So Ding Dong, I think Ding Dong VG on Twitter. Um, I'm sure it's not too hard to find. But a lot of times he, um, what he's been doing is like just retweeting and sharing on Twitter like indie games that look really cool and to the point that I'm like, hopefully a lot of them have links to the Steam page. Like even if it's not out yet, you can still wish list or follow it. So I'm thinking I'm going to have it if I see a cool like, game like that i'm just gonna try to track it down to wish list it and all that and yeah fun stuff and i mean you have ideas to uh play some of those games on st uh st on my twitch stream because a lot of times i've been kind of playing older games a little bit more retro and all that but because one of my concerns is this like playing like a too high-end game that might crash my system i don't think i have much of an issue um, I have a pretty good laptop, um, HP Omen, if any of those are curious. Uh, I might be due for the other one because I don't have a good setup for Because that's my concern is that I have to rely on Wi-Fi, just how my living situation is and all that. Go ahead to streaming with uh, what I've been playing. I'm almost tempted to uh, test other stuff. Like I do play Fortnite in uh, which, Rocket League and stuff like that. So I'm wondering if that way you play well. Even though I played that most in my Switch, which I'm not sure how. I might have to look at that, but I think maybe just play, playing it on PC and trying to stream that. Just to give, mix things up. So it's kind of you know, trying to find what sticks. I kind of like doing my own thing in terms of like play games I want. And if you, no one really watches, I just have fun anyways. But something, you know, if you got going to, if you get attention and more interactions, I think more interaction would be a little bit more validating in a sense. But if to talk about me and video games, 
I also want to get a little bit about talking about the holidays and all that. And one thing I want to mention, I always hear like the war on Christmas and stuff like that. And the big deal, which I don't think is really a big deal, just because I really never personally noticed. But like, I think it's like the most I hear about is like on TV shows or sitcoms or maybe like uh, angry news pundits or something. But when people say happy holidays in place of Merry Christmas, I think sometimes I see like a Facebook post like yearly or Twitter saying, hey, uh, happy holidays. You shouldn't get offended, you know, because there's so many different holidays in the season. But I never experienced anyone being upset, being told happy holidays or the reverse of telling someone Merry Christmas who doesn't celebrate it getting mad. I don't think that that ever happens much at all because I've been like um, in jobs where. You know, more customer facing. I'm glad I'm not customer facing uh, job, but it's always nice. Like I always say, like Merry Christmas. Like usually if they say Merry Christmas, I say Merry Christmas back. Um, I don't know if I'm the first one to say usually it's Happy Holidays. I would say Merry Christmas, but because I celebrate Christmas. But if I didn't, and maybe if I was Jewish and more of a Hanukkah person. <laughs> that, that that's got a weird way of saying it when I say it out loud, but I don't think I would be offended if someone said Merry Christmas, even if it's something uh, celebrated. Because like someone said Happy Hanukkah to me, I would probably just say it right back. And you know, it's the thought that counts, and it's, I think it always comes from a, a a nice place. You know, I think people like to get more nice to their fellow man. Uh, at least that's what I like to think in my little rose-colored glasses view in the holiday season. But yeah, I don't think anyone really gets mad about that. If not, it's very petty. And it's probably angry white people on a news pundit websites or whatever. But I think the whole thing is pretty stupid. But I do like the holidays and all that. I want to talk about like some holiday traditions. And I don't have any like crazy exciting ones. But just kind of reflecting and thinking back. Because um, growing up with Christmas, of course, my mom would make a lot of like cookies and stuff like that. Especially my favorite would be uh, anything that has like the Christmas colors, like the uh, sprinkles, like the sugary sprinkles that are like red and one's green and then like the more candy uh, sprinkles. I just like to kind of like make it look pretty and stuff like that. Like uh, one of my favorite cookies that my mom even posted on Facebook that she's baking them and she's going to save some for me. But the peanut butter blossoms like this but what i like to do is roll them into colored uh sprinkles like it's kind of like uh sugar but it's like sprinkles so it's like the green one or and just roll it up and make to so look kind of have color even though it's a basic kind of cookie and make them more colorful but anything that's free i don't think i've done this in the longest time but when you like get the cookie cutters and then have the sugar cookies and when they're done you frost them and decorate them with like m m's or mini uh Shit, what's it called? Uh, mini chocolate chips and stuff like that for like eyes. Make decorate a snowman or an, a Christmas tree and all that. Like frosting cookies are a front a tradition, and I'm sure that this is the same for like everyone who cel celebrates Christmas. But we did have a tradition that on Christmas Eve night we're allowed to open one present and all that, and we got to get allowances so we can like Christmas shop because I had. Uh, I have five brothers and sisters, although my oldest one um, I did grew up with because she was much older um, in comparison to me and all that. So uh, it was mostly just five of us living together. So we get allowances and buy stuff. I even remember one year for Christmas, my brother, older brother, actually got uh, <laughs> presents by uh, from the quarter machines. So it kind of felt like maybe he cheaped out or something like that. But hey, that uh, kind of stuck in. I think sometimes we even... Um, like the Christmas lights. Like, I, I remember, uh, I'm not sure the whole story about it, but we call it the dollhouse lady. Like, they would put a nice display. I kind of uh, like it. It's like a big front yard, but it's kind of set up so people can walk around and have fun. Like, what's that show, The Great Christmas Light uh, Fight? I kind of catch, I have that on my DVR, but that's like a really fun one. I got to watch that, um, the episodes I have. But it's kind of like that, but at much, much, much smaller scale. But you kind of see like Christmas lights, and I think there was like a Ferris wheel that had different dolls. Like nothing too creepy. It's like your standard like um, toy doll, kind of like look like a little child and stuff like that with I think different outfits and stuff like that. So I'm not sure the whole story about it. I thought like when. Well, Mom or somebody said that the woman one year passed away and the husband keeps it going. But just like the dollhouse lady's house, it was pretty neat. 
I'm sure um, those who might be listening may know the truth about Santa Claus. But but growing up, there was a point that um, like Christmas morning, we'll have to wait for everyone to get up. And basically, we'd be like our bedrooms were one side of the house and like the living family room was the other side of the house. So we'd be like not allowed to go through the hallway to see the tables that we have to wait. And then uh, did, I just remember like we would go one at a time, I think the youngest to oldest. So my little brother, then my little sister, then me. So they would go and my parents would set up the presents from Santa on uh, the dining room table. I think dining room, yeah, because um, it was like the family, whatever. I, I'm not sure about home layout, but I remember like uh, waiting for everyone to get up and then because uh, they would never like wrap the Christmas presents from Santa. So, so that's kind of like the thing that I mean, Santa doesn't exist kind of thing, but whatever. But they would have like the on the main table like set up. And I think we just knew... Um, can't even remember points point out because I don't think they put like our names on a little section of the table that had our toys and stuff like that. But we had like games and I think like play sets too. Like depending on what how old we were in that year, like I think one year when we got a big Mighty Max Castle or dollhouse for my sister stuff like that. But I'm trying to I can't recall remember when like learning the truth that Santa is not real. Uh. Because I remember, like, maybe kind of clicked or whatever. But I remember, like, we got to point that uh, throughout the years as we got older, um, we went to, because I grew up Catholic, and I don't know if this is more my dad, but we uh, went to Christmas Mass. I went to the midnight one. And I think the thing, like, well, Santa's supposed to come at midnight, so if we're at church and stuff like that. And, of course, they didn't have things set up yet. So it's like, Santa comes here when he gets here and kind of, like, that point, you no, you know, Santa's not real, but I I still like to kind of play along with it, especially having like little nephews and nieces and stuff like that. So it's like one thing if you like make jokes or like play with the idea of Santa being real, because it could like 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 idea of gift giving and anything else. But there was a uh, some few holiday traditions and some personal ones I kind of uh, came up with over the years is not too much. I like get some eggnog. Um, drink hot cocoa but um, one of the things is getting those big tins of the popcorn you know like they have the three sections like butter the cheese or white cheddar depending on the company and the caramel corn so usually I get that at the beginning of the month and kind of like uh, graze through it and then I like those um, little tins of the butter cookies and you know what I'm talking about like when you get the empty tins that grandma used to put her uh, selling supplies in or whatever junk, but the little Christmas tins of butter cookies. But I used to get the small one because I remember back in the day, I used to work at a, a vet office and one of our clients every year would get us a huge um, five pound tin of those butter cookies. And even with all of us in office grazing through it, it would just sit in the back for quite some time. And those cookies, like, they hold up. They don't get, like, stale or old or anything like that. But I just remember, like, going through those cookies. And I don't think I'd ever get sick of them. Like, I would have to have some, like, eat so much of it and throw up for me to, like, be put off of them. So even though I eat, like, literally, like, a handful of them every day, I still have to get tired of them. But yeah, that's some good little holiday traditions. And... You try to do a nice dinner. I know my mom always do turkey um, for Christmas as well as Thanksgiving. But I guess one uh, final thing I wanted to talk about on this podcast, uh, holiday related, is I brought up but eggnog and what's going on with eggnog. Maybe I want to be like one of those uh, Alex Jones, like, oh, there's a war on eggnog and all the leftists or non-eggnog drinkers are trying to take it away from society or whatever. But it's funny, throughout the years, it feels like eggnog's not as popular anymore. Like, of course, they always sell it. Um, I think they, I haven't seen it because they didn't went, went to the liquor store or anything like that. They have, like, the pre-mix. I think, um, what you want to call it? Kahlua does one. Yeah, definitely Kahlua, but they did, like, a, a pre-made alcoholic eggnog. I might have to pick some up you know, to get more in the holiday spirit. But I feel like eggnog has just been... I don't know. Not as popular because I remember back in the day too. Well, I, I keep on saying back in the day, but I don't know what's a big reference of time. But 
and especially drinks, because Starbucks used to have an eggnog latte, and I don't, and I, and I don't know when they stopped doing that. Let me look that up real quick, because that gets me curious. Okay, it's kind of confusing. I'm kind of looking up and just seeing articles that they dropped it or sent on Twitter, but it seems like this year they broke the news, but I don't remember seeing it on the menu and stuff like that. And even like the article, they talk about like, you can order off the secret menu, which I always find annoying in my opinion. Like you don't want to like buy stuff off menu and make it harder for the barista or whatever. But the past couple of years, like I don't drink too, too much Starbucks, but sometimes get like a po uh, peppermint mocha. But I haven't seen the eggnog latte for the longest time. And I even I thought Starbucks maybe did like a baked good, like a Danish or donut or some baked good that had like an eggnog frosting or stuff like that. But I don't see that. And I remember um, Jack in the Box would do holiday milkshakes, like do the pumpkin pie and the eggnog. And I think they discontinued both of them. I'm going to try to look that up right now, but I remember they had both, um, and I think they dropped the eggnog one, because I remember, like, just seeing the pumpkin, like, the pumpkin pie or pumpkin, um, eggnog shake, but I haven't seen it for the longest time. I just see, I'm trying to Google that as well, I Google that as well, and just see, like, um, copycat recipes of it. All that, because I remember that was a favorite too. Although the only time I can have an eggnog milkshake, if I, because I'm trying to think of more ice creams used to have like an eggnog flavor, like the only one I found. Not that I checked store for the store, but like the brand uh, for Safeway, that grocery store I kind of go to, um, using their eggnog uh, ice cream and made a milkshake. But I just feel like eggnog is just dropping out of popularity. Like I don't think people really talk about it that much, but. We'll see it on menus and stuff like that, too. But I'm trying to think of other places, really. But I feel like uh, Jack in the Box and Starbucks, like, I, that's why I kind of thought about the holiday uh, drinks and stuff like that, too, in terms of eggnog. But I got to check. Hopefully, I can still find um, the alcoholic one that's pre-made or maybe even make my own. Because I think recipes, I think... Uh, I'm not sure what's the best to mix with eggnog, but I also hear um, people like putting in fireball whiskey, like do the cinnamon. I think fireball whiskey even makes the non-alcoholic eggnog that you can buy. And Southern Comfort too, I think they have a brand, but here uh, Shamrock Farms is like a big dairy company that does the eggnog and all that. But I just thought that's my little uh, bits. It's also kind of a question, uh, eggnog related still, is how do you drink your eggnog? Because I know growing up, like, uh, some family would, like, heat a, a mug of it in a microwave or drink it cold. And I don't know, I had it warm, but I think I always drink it cold. And that's my strong preference and all that. So the question is, do you prefer eggnog to be cold or warm when you drink it? Because, I mean, I don't know, it's kind of weird if it be, since it's a technically dairy drink, like, uh, heating up, but... I prefer, like, when I want a warm, like, beverage for the holiday is um, to do uh, hot cocoa. I guess a lot, another side note on that is that I have um, one of those, not the Keurig brand, but one of those, like, uh, coffee makers that use the K-cups or whatever, little cups. And on the way, I decided to get the cups of the hot cocoa mix. Is usually I get the powder, stir it in with hot water and make it up. But ever since I did the K-cups or whatever you want to call it, the pods with hot cocoa like i ain't going back that's i think that's one of the best ways to make hot chocolate besides dean because i remember getting this one brand of hot chocolate and i didn't realize you actually have to put dairy in it like you actually have to heat up milk and mix it with it versus the powder mix in water i even remember like mentioning that to a friend and stuff like that he said people who mix hot cocoa with uh water or animals or something like that kind of a funny uh play on words or not play on words but just funny like kidding about it and stuff like that but using the k cups as my go-to but i've had women i think the ones that you're supposed to put actual milk in are pretty good too but i think the one thing i don't don't miss is that with like the packets and stuff like that you get the um 
Probably doesn't quite mix in, and you have like little clumps or whatever. You can get most of it mixed in, but you have like little clumps of uh, the hot cocoa mix in it, and kind of sinks to the bottom and stuff like that. But I feel like with the cups, they they use a pretty good cup of cocoa. So my little final thoughts, and yeah, I guess I'll call this a podcast. So I'll have a, a few more in streams for the rest of the month, but there's going to be upcoming break. I'm also going to be taking a lot of videos that. Just, don't kind of fit the channel anymore. Just it, honestly, maybe it's still kind of cringe and stuff like that. So I, know, I doubt anyone really cares, but I just thought so I'd kind of document that uh, through the podcast and mention that. But who knows? Anyways, if anyone's still listening, thank you. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. That's the best way to support me and the channel and all that. And you all have a good day.